Shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. I pray for you. I pray for you. That the most important thing, which is your eyes to open up, may be your experience today in the name of Jesus. And you have the ability to see what you have and where you are today. And that is the highest and the greatest thing can ever happen to you. And you will walk in rest and awareness and knowledge and power and victory and all things that concerns you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God for every single day. Because there is always something to be grateful about. Especially when you discover what he has done for us with us as us and what we are today the, the position we have in God today um, there are times most times you know in fact in fact it's always you know that people who have a certain pattern of thinking based on the programming that took place in their lives from the days they began to hear or being exposed to certain messages leaving everything aside i only pick this example of what people have come to know about the gospel and reveal to you that the way the gospel has been presented to people, the way the word of God has been presented to people, has wired them to think in a certain way. Their neural path is programmed in a given way. And they only think that way. If God was presented to them in a certain way, they will think about him or think of him that way. And what people don't realize is that whatever you hear or what you listen to will not leave you the same. It will always alter something about you. It will change or confirm or re-establish the way you think. And the pattern of your thinking is very, very important. Life will always be that way. Not because that is all that there is, but because you've been programmed that way. So the gospel has been presented to us, and I will give you an example. Most times we think, or what we hear, is that God, right, is taking you from the dark place, 
the negative in some negativities and taking you somewhere else better god is taking you out from your darkness to light actually what they present consistently it is this move of god trying to get you out from um the negative part and negative world the dark world to take you to into a better place you know the idea of canaan and egypt now that is okay because that is what god has done notice my tenses that is what god has done but the problem of the presentation that we keep on hearing is is it as assumes it assumes or it a, it affirms that we are are there permanently in the in a certain dark world and god is always you know planning to take us from that dark world into a, a better world it is always he's taking you from here and taking you there and this is presented to us every single day every single week you know so it keeps on actually confirming that we are permanently there in that dark world or uh, failure or uh, you know evil position or anything described as evil negative you know the we god is setting us free from the hands of the devil you you know such things I, i'm just telling you that something is wrong with this kind of presentation of the gospel because it is always god will do it or is going to do it and it is not happening and sometimes you wonder when shall we now get out from that place which uh, is been told to us and get there where we are being told i mean a kind of a promised land you know that we should uh, we shall be taken to this move of you know where god is taking us from and where he's taking us it sounds good and is presented to us and sometimes we don't even know how to discern and so we are so excited because it it vibrates with our day to day you know situations and experiences and little did we know that this is not even true that our position in the eyes of god is not where we think we are that when we look at things carnally we are always misunderstanding everything and the way we are wired has imposed on us a certain pattern and that is where we we are and we see things that way but the truth is if you tell me that god is trying to take me out of something you are confirming that i'm there right and so god is trying to get me out of wherever i am and is going to say it week in week out and eventually my concern is when shall we get out of that place that we keep on hearing you know from the presentation of the gospel whatever calls so called the gospel and that is not actually the way the gospel is supposed to be presented but that is what we hear so it's like we are there and God will take us from there so we we think that is exactly true that we are in that dark place we are suffering and so God should come and help us this is the way the gospel has been presented to us now we've been reading hebrews i'll give you an example here in hebrews chapter 8 verse 
He says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So God promised through the prophet Jeremiah that a time is coming where by he will make a new covenant. He will make a new covenant with the children of Israel and Particularly here, he was talking about the whole world when you study the details of it. The only issue is that he could not tell them deeper and higher things. They could not even get it or pick it. It's exactly, you know, our problem today. We always interpret things depending on how wide or the scope, based on the scope of our minds. So we think in a certain scope. And if our scope is limited, we will see things very, very limited. But when we have an, a broad understanding, we have now a better understanding. For I will be merciful was a promise. I'm giving you an example to show you that this is an issue the way the gospel is presented. So the, the promise was I will be merciful, right, to there. And righteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no now this was gonna happen by the time the Messiah arrives on the earth and when this writer of the Hebrews was presenting this truth to them he wasn't telling them that God is gonna do it sometime in the future no he was telling them that this is a promise that God made through a prophet many, many years ago. And that promise has come to be, is fulfilled, has been fulfilled by the Messiah. Because there was supposed to be the one, somebody who makes this a reality. And only Jesus Christ came and made it a reality. So the man is not actually telling them that this is going to happen someday in the future. He's stating a statement of fact based on the prophecy they had many years ago through the prophet Jeremiah. So presenting this to them of course, because they were Hebrews, these words were read for them. It was read in their synagogues so they could hear what the prophets prophesied. So they were familiar with this kind of prophecy. So the writer is reminding them, no, he, God pro promised that there will be another covenant, another time, whereby he will never remember your sins anymore. He will forgive you. So there, there was, there was going to be a, a, a period of time, a dispensation of mercy and forgiveness being established by Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And once that happens, you people will not seek after what has been given to you or what has been established. You will stop seeking mercy or running after mercy as it was happening in the old before the arrival of the Messiah. Rather, you will be now gracious. You will be grateful. You will be happy. You will rejoice. You will be praising and worshiping God that what he promised has been fulfilled. Because it's, for you, it is not a, a promise that is going to happen someday in the future. It is now a reality in your life. So how is this supposed to be pro presented? What, the way it's supposed to be presented today is the mercies and the forgiveness of God is already here. So we don't have to ask for it as if it is not there. And we should not stand in the Old Testament while we are in the New. Rather, we should acknowledge that is the word now. The acknowledgement of what we have in the present makes the difference. This is how the gospel is supposed to be presented. It is supposed to be presented as a day, a present day reality that people should acknowledge rather than a promise of one day God will take us from wherever we are to take us there, to get us there, rather to reveal that we are already there. All we need is to acknowledge that we are there. This 
makes the difference. Hope you got something. Shalom, shalom. Peace out.